My name is Don Hopkins, and I'm going to describe the ActiveX control implementation of Pi menus that I developed that you can plug into web pages with Internet Explorer and integrate into your C++ and Visual Basic programs. Um, it was designed as an ActiveX control, so user interface designers could use this reusable component to make applications with Pi menus. The ActiveX Pi menu component is designed to be robust, general purpose, and easy to integrate into all kinds of web pages and user interfaces. The graphical layout is dynamic and adaptive, and the look and feel can be adjusted in many ways. But Pi menu comes with reasonable defaults, so they should work well for a wide right range of situations. They can support any number of items and arbitrarily nested submenus. So here is a demo of the ActiveX Pi menu control running in a web page. Now, in this rectangle, when I click on it, it pops up the Pi menu. And each item has a rounded rectangle around it because it has a submenu. So this is a tree of demo menus with various types. So if I click on Compass Rows, it pops up the eight directions. And these are all other submenus with other demos. So one thing you can do with Pi menus is to use the other button and you clicked it up with, the right button, to peel back a layer and march back. So this is called browsing. You click the left button to pop it up, you move around, and then you click again to pop up another one. And if you click the left button in the middle of the menu, it cancels the whole tree. If you click the right button, it just goes back one so that you can pop up, look at it, go back pop up, look at it, and go back. So this is browsing the menu. It also has full keyboard support where you just hit the arrow keys or the tab key to go to the next. Um, so anything you can do from the mouse, you can do with the keyboard after you pop it up. Now, if you'll notice, there's another way to use Pi menus. This first way, press, wait for it to pop up, release the mouse button, move, press and release the mouse button is less, um, it's easier because there's less mouse tension. You're not moving the mouse with the button hold down. And it's for people who don't know the menus and want to pop them up and just explore them and see what's there without a lot of stress. Um, once you get used to the menu, this is a big nested submenu, way, way deeper. Uh, it's off the screen now. So, so now that we know that menu, OK, we can pop back to see how to get there. It's the, we go up to compass rows, down to south, down to deep, down to deeper, down to even deeper. So now I'll just cancel this. So once you've learned that, um, the first step in learning a Pi menu, um, using it in this mode is rehearsal for using it in the expert mode. So if you remember that we want to move the mouse down, you can press and move the mouse, and then you wait, and it pops up only after you stop moving. So that's called mouse ahead display preemption. And it Pi menus either lead, follow, or get out of the way. When you don't know them, they lead you. When you are familiar with them, they follow. And when you're really familiar with them, they get out of the way. You don't even see them unless you stop and in which case it then pops up the whole tree. So um, the first step in learning a Pi menu is remembering the direction, pressing, moving, waiting to see the feedback, recognizing that you're right, then releasing. But experts will then get enough confidence to just press, move, and release like that. And that then pops up the next one. And you can cascade these, um, press, press, and press. Oh, let's wait to see that we're sure. OK, good. Now release, or press, press, and press, and I'll be there at that time, whatever it was. So obviously, what's important for feedback uh, when you're using mouse ahead is that the application will show you in real time what the effects of the menu are so that it's not necessarily, uh, you, you don't need to see the menu uh, in any case. So um, as we browse the menu, you'll notice um, if we go to a menu that has a whole bunch of items, the number of items is limited to eight, and the extra items are to put into this spillover menu, which is not a pie menu, but it's more just a standard target menu. But if you click in the target, 
it moves the focus to that group. So these are chunked into groups of eight, which are always the same. You can use the page up and the page down key, or you can just go and click. So this is paging to deal with a lot of items, which is one approach. So also, um, so here you have four items. Um, this implementation of Pi menus will um, automatically, if you have seven items, it'll put in a dummy so that there are eight and it's easier to choose from. And there's a lot of little things like that that um, you can do to help people design easy to use menus in spite of themselves. It's not obvious to people what an advantage it is to having eight items. So if the system helps you have eight items, <laughs> then uh, you, people will get better menus. So in any case, um, I want to show the, the um, when you're pointing at something and you press down, it cuts away all the menu except the thing that's selected. So that's, that is an option, but it's, it's a nice um, mechanism. You can turn it on or off. So, um, and as you can see, there's all kinds of, um, you know, it's just slicing out the window in whatever shape it needs. But also these menus support all kinds of different shapes. Uh, it's not in this particular demo, but uh, at any case, um, the advantages of the ActiveX control is that it's reusable and it packages this up so that uh, it's very easy to edit. And I will now show you the property sheet. This here is the ActiveX control test container that lets me create an instance of an ActiveX control that's this rectangle and try it out. When I click, this is the default menu you get with just four items. And as I select, it sends notification down here and tells what the application is being notified of. Now, this is a design time control here. So as you would get when you're programming Visual Basic or something like that, so I can get at that time the properties on this Pi menu in order to edit it. Now, the items are specified just as a list one after the other. But the neat little trick is that if you want to make a submenu, you just indent items. So for north, we can have the pole, and under the pole, we could have Santa and Rudolph. Now, so what I'm going to do is just hit OK, and we'll see what that translated into. So when I click, I get the north, south, east, west, but north has a circle around it, and pop up an item, a one item menu, pole, and then there's Santa and Rudolph. So it makes it very easy to input a tree of menus. But the other thing is there's a lot of properties that you can adjust for the uh, uh, the menu itself. So we have a big air traffic control kind of a dialogue with all the little check boxes and, and parameters that you might want to change to uh, customize the behavior. So one of the really interesting uh, things here is the shape. There's a bunch of different shapes, like um, there's, well, there's rectangular and minimal, which is kind of shrink wrap, round, thought, speech balloon, slot bubbles, spokes, and a picture. So you can actually specify the shape by another mask that the artist makes. Now, um, so for example, one of my favorite is the thought balloons. So we'll select that and then click up and... Uh, zoom in there so since this menu doesn't have a lot of items it doesn't push it out very far but we can easily change that go into the items and a b c d so now it's got eight items and uh, you can see the little pop balloons so uh, and also works very nicely with the speech bubbles and even just a regular old square menu, uh, rectangular, that works just fine too. And uh, one of the interesting ones that I like is spokes. So these are kind of neat. Look like a space station or something. So basically, there's I've been just playing around with different ways to shape the window and different ways to give feedback with a shaped window. Now, um, other properties 
um, include different tabs on here. There's a preview of what the menu is going to look like. And um, you can open up this outline view of the menu and click on these things and see what it's going to look like when it's selected. So that helps the designer uh, customize it without going back and forth a lot. And of course you can set fonts, you know, something like that, the big thing, and then go back to preview and it's got a new font. You can select colors, you know, yellow background color, uh, a black foreground color, and then check out the preview. And, um, and then also you can put pictures into it um, to set the background and the shape. And uh, basically those are the controls that the user interface designer has to customize the Pi menus. And uh, let's see. Well, I ran up into a wall of complexity with this ActiveX control and that I wanted to be able to have as the menu items you know, animated GIFs, MPEG movies, fonts with nice attributes and things like that. So the first thought was, well, let's just put a whole web browser in every item, but that was a little uh, heavy handed. So instead, I put the Pi menus into the web browser as dynamic HTML component, which I'll show next.